You know, I think you said it there when you talked about supply, uh, offsetting uh, and keeping these prices in a stable range, and that's exactly what we have. Uh, we're bringing on about a million uh, barrels per year additional supply in this country. So we've had tremendous growth since 2008 till now. Uh, that all that growth uh, in uh, the whole market, basically 65 percent has been generated right here in the U.S. So that's what's keeping it in a stable situation. Uh, relative wise, we have the cheapest gasoline prices in the world. Uh, unsub unsubsidized gasoline prices, cheapest in the world right here in the U.S. It seems to me that if you were probably of the belief that if OPEC does cut production or any one large member country cuts production, the U.S. can be right there to sort of step up. Well, th that's true. I mean, we are stepping up. Uh, we have stepped up, and that that's what's going on. It's all about horizontal drilling and, you know, the American energy renaissance and, and what that, that's done to change the entire world. It's a, it's a great thing that's occurred, and... You know, we, we take, the uh, U.S. needs to take full credit for it. Uh, we need to bring the narrative back to the U.S. Uh, and and not, not be talking all about OPEC. You know, it's about uh, offsetting this new demand uh, with the American supply, and that's what we're doing. You know, one hears a lot, Mr. Ham, of, uh, of concern about we can produce the oil, we can get it out of the ground, but can we transport it, particularly in the Permian area, to the, to the refineries and the places the oil needs to go. Walk us through that a little bit. Is that a, is that a, a, a pressure point in this very otherwise positive supply story? Every time you bring on a new field, and that's basically what you have, even with the Permian, it's a producing area that's been around a long time, but today with horizontal drilling, you're going through a complete transformation and so you need uh, a lot of takeaway capacity, both for oil and gas. And yeah, that's, that's an issue, and, but it, it's being corrected and it, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but you know, people reversing pipelines, they're doing all the necessary steps, uh, basically to get that product to, to the market, and it's working, but there's a, there's a lot involved and it, it takes a little bit of time to get it done, but you know, within a year or two, we'll be there. What about uh, the liquefied natural gas and the tariff that China has slapped on that when it comes from the U.S., a 10 percent tariff, so not as bad as potentially it could have been, but China's a big buyer of liquefied natural gas, no? So doesn't that sort of just hurt China? Well, China's uh, an important market, and uh, I don't want to downplay that at all, but, but they only represent about 4 percent of the entire amount of LNG exports. So it's rel relatively small. Uh, this year, that's, that amounts to about uh, 9 BCF. Uh, so it's a pretty small number relative-wise. But even, even with the tariff on there, it's still the, probably the best deal I have.